you came with, whatever infirmity, whatever affliction, it is going to lift right now. The Lord is here to meet you at the point of every need. He's here to meet you at the point of every need. Just make sure you lift up your price to Him. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Come on, this is a good place to raise your worship to God. It's a good place to raise your incense of worship to Jesus. It's a good place to raise your incense of worship to Jesus. Come on, I can hear your voice. Remember your ticket to receiving your miracles. It's your praise. It's your heart of praise.
to. Let him hear you. Let him know that he's too faithful. Too faithful to fail you. You're too. You're too faithful to disappoint me. You're too.
bless him in the spirit. You are God and you change not. You remain the same. You are the unchangeable changer. There is none like you. There is none beside you. There is none to be compared with you. None as great and as high as you are. We worship you in the splendor of your majesty. In the beauty of your holiness. We ascribe praise to you out of Zion. Open your mouth and bless him. Open your mouth and fill this house with praise. Open your mouth and fill this room with praise. Open your mouth and let his praises flow out of your being. If I have a worshiper tonight, lift your voice and just magnify him. Lift your voice and exalt him. Yeah. 
hands and give him praise wave your hands as an act of worship not just as a ritual wave your hands as an act of worship lift your hands wave it unto him open your mouth and magnify him because his presence is in this place Lord, we lift up your name.
Spirit, open your mouth and pray in other tongues. Open your mouth and begin to speak in the Spirit. Speak in the language of the Spirit. Before we pray and be seated, I want to prophesy the word that the Lord gave me. Just two, and then we will pray and we are seated. And I'd like you to really believe with all your heart this moment is someone's moment. Inside and outside, I'd like your heart to truly be open. The presence of God is so strong in this place. I sense that tonight there will be. A strong activity of angelic beings in this place. So much impartation, so many things that God will do tonight. I'd like you not to miss any moment. In the name of Jesus Christ. I had a vision this morning, very close to midday. And the Lord gave me two words to prophesy over our lives. And I want to release it with the anointing that is in this place. In Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 29 to 30, it's two scriptures while we are standing, and then I'll begin to prophesy over our lives. Ezekiel 36, 29 to 30. It says, I will deliver you from all your uncleanness. But the emphasis is the next part of the verse. I will call for the grain and multiply it. 
and bring no famine upon you. So, God asked me to come and release a grace for financial breakthroughs. Are you ready to receive it? Don't pretend like you don't, well, you don't need it. Don't be too spiritual. You know, there are some people when you mention finance, they say, no, no, let's press into God. If we extract finance from your life, you will not press into God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says in Joel chapter 2 verse 26, And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And bless the Lord your God. <laughs> so there are some kind of praise that can't come out of your mouth. Until you have seen resources provided by the hand of God. I came with a strong anointing to prophesy it. And I want you to believe it. Second scripture, Psalms 118 verse 25. Psalms 118 verse 25. For somebody, this will be your prayer all through this week. It says, save now, I pray. O Lord, O Lord, I pray. Send now prosperity. What's the prayer point? Send now. Send when? Tomorrow? Next month? Next year? Perhaps you can wait for the next five years. Send when? Now. Now the grace of God is upon my life and I want to prophesy over your life that in the name of Jesus Christ, whose I am and whom I serve, before the end of this service and before the breaking of the day tomorrow, May the gates of financial prosperity open for somebody. Everything that has restricted the blessings of God around your life, I arrest it right now. And I release the blessings of God in a mighty way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the angels of prosperity begin to visit your homes, visit your business, visit your families. Experience prosperity all around. Experience financial possibility this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. I saw in a vision this morning when the Lord gave me this word. I saw I saw God blessing somebody with a million naira. Yeah. Yes. I know it when I see it. Now in the name of Jesus. I shift you to the realm of millionaires. By the hand of God's favor. May the blessings of God begin to come in the realm of millions into your space. Don't ask how it shall happen. I release it into your life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to get ready from tomorrow. In the next 14 days, there will be strange and multiple testimonies of finances. Believe it. Believe it. I didn't come here to whine you. I didn't come here to joke with you. I'm too anointed to be a joker. I'm prophesying it over your life again. In the next 14 days, I force the doors of prosperity over your life. Whether you are ready for it or not, receive that grace in a tremendous way. In the name of Jesus Christ. It will happen oh, by the Spirit of God. Listen, there are three people on this road. This road. Huh? Just bring it down a little. This is Super Sunday, so everything is everything. There are three of you that God is showing me on this road. You are undergoing a project right now. And then there is one of you, you are about to start a business. You are a lady. The three guys I'm talking about, the three people I'm talking about are guys. Then the one person that is about to start a business, you are here, you are a lady. These other three guys, you are undergoing 
a project right now. The Lord says he's releasing mega blessings into your life. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, lift your hands. This one is deliverance. I heard in a vision. Oh my God, the angels of God are already moving. I had a vision this morning and in the vision I heard somebody scream. And I heard something like gates opening. And God said there are people that before I start to teach that, that need deliverance. Now lift your hands. I pray in the name of Jesus. And by the rod of a higher priesthood. Anyone that is in any satanic prison. Any form of satanic obstruction around your life. In the name that raised Jesus from the dead. I declare let those gates of hell be open right now. Let those satanic gates be open right now. Anyone that is trapped in any demonic cell, in the name of Jesus, be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone that has been attacked in your dreams, you are having attacks in your dreams, sleepless nights, you seem to be, you, there seems to be a siege of the enemy around your life. I release the angels of God over your life today. And in the name of Jesus, I bring that battle to an end. I bring that battle to an end. Let every attack of the enemy over your life be overturned. Be overturned. Be overturned. Be overturned. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let the chains of darkness that has held you bound, that has held your finance, that has held your progress, that has held any aspect of your life that has restrained you, let those chains be broken now. Let those chains be broken now. Let those chains be broken now. I demand your liberty now. In the name of Jesus Christ. says for him whom the son sets free is free indeed I declare that you will walk free from tonight and hear me whatever the enemy has stolen from you in this season let it be restored double let it be restored double I tell you this is a path for somebody in this service let it be restored double I invade every satanic warehouse, every demonic bank where the things that have been stolen from you are kept and I release them double into your life, double into your space. I declare for your shame you shall have double. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. My God, the presence of God is here. There's a lady here now. God is telling me to tell you you are free. Shh. Just hold on. Hold on. This one, this world will be with a manifestation. You are free. The anointing is coming on you where you are now. And that burden will be lifted off you in a moment of time. Whatever the enemy has placed on your life, wherever you are, God knows you. I declare the word of the Lord to you that you are free. You are free. You are free. You are free. 
free. You are free. There's another person. You are free. You are free. You are free. Every pain, every affliction, every burden is lifted. That's why you came here. Jesus said, Ought not this daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for 18 years, be free on the Sabbath? You are free. And this is your season of rest. This is your season of rest. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Wave your hands and give him praise. It is raining all around me. I can feel the rattling. There's a rain that is falling now. There's an unction that is falling on people right now. And we are so lighter. Please lift your hands. There is a rain of the presence of God that is falling on some people right now. Lift your hands and receive it. Step into the rain. Step into the rain. Step into the rain. Let it fall. Let it fall. Unction. A fresh anointing. The presence. A new dimension of grace. A new dimension. A new dimension. Receive it. Receive the rain. Lift your hands. Receive it. Receive it. Receive that unction of the Spirit. Be soaked with that rain. Be soaked from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be soaked inside and outside. Inside and outside. Be soaked with that rain. Be soaked with that rain. If this is your power, if this is your presence, if this is your glory, so let it rain. Just allow me to sing. Lift your hands and receive. If this is your power, if this is your presence, God is restoring mantles. If this is your glory, There's a lady here, there is a prophetic grace that is on you. You, you are supposed to be a third generation of, of a lineage of prophetess. Now, it's activated. Help, help that lady. You are supposed to be a third generation. It's activated now. It's activated now. Step into that ordination. Step into that grace. Step into that dimension of grace. When God gives you what you don't work for, it's called inheritance. Step into that inheritance. Step into that inheritance. If this is your power, if this is your presence, if this is your glory, so let it rain. If this is your power, if this is your presence, if this is your glory, so let it Can you open your hands like you want to receive something? I see, I see God distributing spiritual gifts right now. I see God distributing spiritual gifts inside and outside. 
those of you are the overflow you are part of what god is doing right now lift your hands open it like you want to receive something father let it fall 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 single them out single them out let those giftings be released let the power gifts be released the gift of faith workings of miracles the gifts of healings let it be released let it be released the gift of prophecy tongues and interpretation of tongues let it be released mightily gifts of wisdom word of wisdom word of knowledge discerning of spirit receive it receive it receive it let it rest upon you let it rest upon you this is your season this is your time to walk in a new anointing this is your season for a new anointing though you are weak but god is coming to empower you he's coming to strengthen you strengthen the feeble hands and the weak knees if this is your presence if this is your power if this is your glory so let it rain wave your hands and give him praise sharabata koramasi blessed be your name blessed be your name blessed be your name In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Please be seated in the presence of God. God bless you and welcome to Pneumatech. An experience of the wisdom, the presence and the power of Jesus Christ. Your life will never remain the same after tonight. I said your life will never remain the same after tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. I welcome us inside and outside. Those that are following online, you're welcome. Trust God for amazing things tonight. Amen and amen. I want to give us a brief charge before we get into the word tonight something that the lord laid on my heart uh, you know god has a way of addressing everybody in a service okay so this charge i want to give before the sermon is probably directed to certain people and i want you to receive it with meekness take it seriously and embrace it to do the right thing. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17 King James translation it says learn to do well. Amen. Just help those under the anointing okay. Amen. Um, let me start the charge by reading a scripture the bible says the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty there is liberty that liberty works in two ways number one liberty as in deliverance from bondage deliverance from satanic onslaught number two it is freedom of access into the realm of the spirit he said the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty so you will either you will experience either of this either deliverance from satanic onslaught you know, there are some people who are demonized, who don't even know that they are demonized until they get exposed to an atmosphere that is energized by the presence of God. 
And one of the things that should happen on Mount Zion is deliverance. And then liberty as in freedom of access. You may pray in your house and not be able to break through. You may not be able to sense the presence of God in your private time of prayer or studying the Bible. But when you come under an atmosphere like this, it looks like there is a glass ceiling that is shattered. And then your spirit and your soul is able to gain access and be immersed in the abundance of the presence of God that is here. So inside and outside and following online, I'd like us to really be connected tonight. Don't get too distracted by your physical surroundings. Your eyes may be open to see, your ears may be open to hear, but ensure that the eyes of your heart is open to see Jesus. Amen and amen. Luke chapter 12, verse 37 to 48. I'll start the charge by reading this scripture. Very, very important charge that I want to give to us. And I want us to really take it seriously. It may sound like correction to some people, but I want you to embrace it with love. He said, blessed are those servants who the master, when he comes, will find watching. As shortly I say to you that he will get himself and have them sit down to eat and will come and serve them. So the reward of their serving him while on earth is that when he comes, he serves them in his kingdom. And if he should come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so blessed and find them so blessed are those servants. In other words, when the Lord returns, he wants to find us. Go back, just keep the scripture. He wants to find us dedicated to the service of his house. You know, in John chapter 12, you don't need to go there. Jesus said in verse 26, that he that serves me will my father honor. So the reward of being dedicated to the service of the house of God is that when the Lord returns, he honors you by serving you in his kingdom. He says, but know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Then Peter said to him, Lord, go to verse 43. He said, blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Wait, go to 42 so we understand what 43 was saying. 42. And the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his master will make rule over his household to give their portion of food in due season? Still talking about commitment to where God has placed you in respect to the service of the house of God. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is delaying, is delaying his coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and eat and drink and be drunk. In other words, when you are busy with other things, that are not in line with God's allocated point of duty for you in his house. He said, the master of that servant will come on a day when he's not looking for him and at an hour when he's not aware and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers, which is hellfire. And that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he who did not know, yet committed things deserving of stripes, shall be beaten with few. For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. And to whom much has been committed of him, they will ask the more. And God laid it in my heart at the middle of this week to charge us briefly to be dedicated to the service of his house. It's not just a load. It's not just enough to be saved, born again, and um, loving God and attending church. 
you must take your love for God a step further by being committed to kingdom service. There is always a place for everybody, for every believer, as far as service is the, in the house of God is concerned. And I want everybody to listen to me now, please. Including those mothers outside, I want you to listen. There is a place for everybody. No one is saved into the kingdom to just sit down doing nothing. There is a point of duty, a point of service for everybody. Find your place in the house of God and be committed there. It's part of the proof of your love for God. You know, salvation is the proof of God's love for us. Now that you are saved, everything that you will do will be the proof of your love, the response of your love to him. Some of us, when we were in the world, we were actively involved. We were Satan's agents. In fact, you are an apostle. It's you that Satan will use to lure other people. Some of us were frequenting parties and clubs and some of us were, 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 were reputable and veteran gossipers. All kinds of things, name it. Now that you are saved, you better pay back by doing much more for God than what you did for the devil. You know, you come to church these days when it's praise and worship, people are afraid of dancing. They are, they are shy of dancing. But when they were in the world, when they were going for bat, birthday bash and birthday parties, they would dance even when the generator gets off, they will still be dancing. So you fi better find a way. I'm trying to be as practical as the Lord laid it on my heart. Find a way now that you are in Christ to do twice as much as you did when you were in the world. And you know that what I'm saying is sensible. Let's be committed and dedicated to the service of God's house. There's no such thing as a bench warmer. There's no such thing as a member. We are members of the body of Christ. Not members of church. Every one of us must be dedicated to service. And hear me. There is no social reputation that is acquired that exempts you or makes you immune to serving in the house of God. It's a deceit from the kingdom of darkness. There is nothing you become in this life that you didn't receive from God. So therefore, there is no height you rise to that makes you immune from serving in the house of God. That's why I read this scripture. The Bible is talking about those that Jesus will return to find actively involved in his service. This was the passion of the saints of old who wrote hymns. You will recall one of those hymns, Must I go and empty-handed? Must I meet my Savior so? They were so passionate and zealous about the work of the Master that they were committed. And the Bible says, Blessed is that servant that the Lord will return and find faithful. So please, if you are a single person here, you are not married, give yourself wholly to the service of God's house. Be committed. Find a department. Find a place. Not just here. Maybe your local church. But find a place and serve. There is no... All of us are equal as far as God is concerned when it comes to his service. The person whose duty is to wash the toilet of the church still stands equal before God as the pastor who preaches. We will be rewarded on the basis of our faithfulness to that work. The fact that you wash toilets does not make you a second class citizen in the kingdom. No. In fact, when you take up more humiliating positions, God will seem to exalt and honor you more. So let's be committed. If you are called into ministry as a pastor, give your time to studying the word. Give your time to prayer. Don't say that there is heat in Medugriam because of that I am not praying again. No. If you are called as a psalmist, as a worship leader, commit yourself train yourself everything you do to develop your ministry is an act of service in the house of god be committed to it not for human gain or recognition do it as unto the lord the bible says that when a person is single they will give their self to the lord now for our married men and women we honor you we respect you we love you and god bless you but you have not graduated from serving 
the fact that you get married and then you no longer associate with your department it is you have been deceived by the devil it is wrong in fact it is in marriage that your commitment to kingdom service should increase this thing that the moment somebody gets married you don't find them in their duty post again they now have a seat and if i catch anybody putting that kind of seat in this place i'm the shepherd here you will not tell me what to do if i catch any usher or any protocol member or anybody giving putting seat for married people there's nothing like that here we are all before god equal if you are an usher before you got married thank god you are married and you are back from your honeymoon get back to your post if you used to wash toilet get back there if you were in the worship team get back there there's nobody graduate simply because you get married where did we get it from these are unscriptural practices in the house of god that must stop if i don't want you like this you you will continue doing the wrong thing and think it is right am i talking to you i'm trying to be as firm as possible but you know be gentle but please and please don't let any devil or anybody deceive you don't join those people who get married and graduate from church work don't join them don't sit near them blessed is the man that seated not in the seat of the scornful abby uh -huh. don't join them all. otherwise when we get to heaven god will say from the time you married till now there's no record you were busy enjoying your seat as a married woman as a married man may that not be so for you in the name of jesus christ if you hear that i've gotten married as far as that sunday i'm in meduguri i will be here to preach even if i don't preach i'll, st I'll stand and somebody will preach are you hearing me god comes first may god never bless you or lift you and then you allow the things god has given to you to get into your head may the gifts of god never replace the giver in the name of jesus christ everything that god gives you including your spouse your beautiful your handsome spouse all of them inclusive are to aid you in the service of god that's charge number one charge number two i like to encourage us to take our growth and transformational journey with god very serious the moment you become a believer you have begun what i call the ministry of transformation and it will continue till you leave this world god is transforming you day by day into the image of his son using the instrument of his word and his spirit and the fellowship and interaction that you enjoy with the saints transformation is not only your private bible study and prayer no there are virtues that god can have you learn and receive from people when you gather in the presence of god that's why the bible says in hebrews 10 25 that we should not forsake the gathering of the saints take your journey of transformation very serious don't just be a nominal christian there is no there is no life in that there is no help in that there is no advantage in that be very serious about your growth seek to experience radical spiritual and mental transformation know god for yourself and grow in your knowledge of god that means that when you come into this house or when you come in a meeting like this when it is time for the word you are very serious listening with all your heart paying attention expecting a word that will come and transform both your mind and your spirit so wherever you are seated if it is possible ensure that you are writing when the sermon is going on but most importantly listen with your ears and with your heart those of us that are mothers carrying children it's not an excuse for you not to write in the house of god we are praying that god will bless us a time will come where we will get a separate tent and maybe make it very conducive for mothers breastfeeding mothers and all of that you can be there there will be a screen and sound systems for you to be part of the service and then maybe put cots for your babies to sleep in so that you can listen and jot for yourself don't use the excuse of the fact that you are married or you are now a nursing mother 
and then after one year others have been transformed to higher dimensions of glory you you have you have backslided into becoming an unbeliever you know there are people who come to church and end up backsliding because they don't listen when the sermon is going on they don't pay attention they find their group and begin to gossip or begin to talk up and down and you know when we talk like this they will say pastor is talking about you well that's your business oh uh, as far as it saves you it will save you don't come to church and end up an unbeliever pay attention those of you that the media stand the sound department the ushering security the fact that you are walking up and down does not exempt you from the service if you continue like that not paying attention the year will end and your life will have retrogressed 10 steps backward don't be a pharisee that that will not allow people to come into the kingdom and themselves are not going in after every of these services i go back and replay the message i go on youtube and watch it again and listen for myself at least twice every week paul said i will not preach the gospel and myself be a castaway i submit to everything that comes from this pulpit because it's not me who is speaking it's the word through his servant there's a difference between the servant of god and myself so let's take our work with God very serious. If we will serve God, let's serve him wholeheartedly. If we will not serve God, then let's hold the devil very well. But by all means, make sure you grow spiritually. Life on earth is extremely spiritual. You can't afford to be a backsliding believer. You can't afford to be a nominal Christian. Not in these last days. Not with the kind of things that you are seeing. If we have played games before, it's time for us to get serious. I'd like you to pray one prayer while you are seated. Lord, help me to be serious with my growth and transformational journey in you, in the name of Jesus. Please pray. Please pray. I didn't say meditate it. Pray. Help me to be serious. I may not be doing enough. Strengthen me to strive harder. Strengthen me to walk harder. Strengthen me to press. Paul said this one thing I do daily. Forgetting those things that are behind. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Give me strength to strive harder. To press further. May my job not be an excuse. May marriage not be an excuse. May children that you have given to me not be an excuse. May financial blessings not be an excuse. May social reputation that you have given to me, the influence that you've given me, may not be an excuse. Make sure you are praying, please. Sharabata make dabas. Marahabate brahaska pranas. In Jesus' name we pray. One more prayer. Please lay your right hand on your head and ask the Lord that in the course of these seven super Sundays, let something definitely happen in my life. In the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Let something definite, a change, something powerful let it drop let it rest upon my life let there be an evidence of your divine touch please make sure you are praying make sure you are praying make sure you are praying i'm here for an encounter open my eyes oh god so ramata maradenus in jesus mighty name we pray i believe that god will strengthen us to take our work with him very serious and to strive harder amen the bible says draw near to god and he will draw near to you james chapter 4 verse 8 so while you are, you are here ensure you pay attention and listen take down notes on your jotter and then when you go back, don't throw the jota away till next Sunday. Go back and internalize what you have written. Look into it again. Peruse over it. Meditate on it. 
and let it be internalized in your heart. The Bible says we should not be hearers alone, but doers of his word. Doers of his word. Satan is not concerned about what you write in your jota. Satan is concerned about what is written in your heart. You hear what I said? So are we ready tonight? Okay, let me bring my exciting mode now. I want to teach briefly on what I titled the breath of God. The breath of God. The breath of God. That breath will come upon somebody today. That breath will come upon somebody today. God decided for this teaching because he wants to change somebody's life. Because he wants to touch somebody. For some of you, this is the lesson for you to rise higher in the spirit realm. The breath of God that will rest upon somebody's life after tonight. That whilst I'm speaking, you are experiencing and you are having an encounter of what I'm talking about. Whilst I'm speaking, you are being translated to higher dimensions in the spirit. Whilst I'm speaking, God is transporting you to higher dimensions in the heavens. You know, the Bible says, The Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet when he spoke. So it is possible that while I'm speaking, some of you are already being carried by the Spirit into realms and dimensions in the heavens. Some of you will not even understand what's happening to you right now. Some of you, all kinds of activations will be going on inside of you. In fact, I beg to say that there are some of you that as I begin the teaching from now to the end, you may not be able to write because you will be experiencing something supernatural happening to you. What a powerful revelation that God will give us tonight. The breath of God in bracket secret to supernatural empowerment. Secret to supernatural empowerment. Job chapter 32 verse 8. It says, but there is a spirit in man and the breath of the almighty gives him understanding. I like to read it in message translation and amplified version for better understanding. There is a spirit in man. But I see I was as I, I see I was wrong. It's God's spirit in a person, the breath of the Almighty that makes wise human insight possible. But there is a vital force of a spirit of intelligence in man, and the breath of the Almighty gives him or gives men understanding so that spirit is the breath of the almighty amplified calls it a vital force the word vital means living it also means essential there are things that are essential for every living thing to exist and to thrive talk to those two people that are playing outside there those two sound people that are playing outside is either they are doing their work there or they are inside listening <laughs> don't cheat yourself this night too. there is a spirit in man there is a spirit in man that spirit is a breath I wish I have time to talk to you and help you understand the difference between the man of the Old Testament and the man of the New Testament. Okay, I think I should just do that before we go on. Because my job as a man of God, my job according to my calling is to bring you light and insight. So it's okay for me to do a little explanation there. You see, when God created man, and I will come there, 
when God created man in the Old Testament, the man that God created was body, had a soul, and had breath in them, not spirit. Genesis 2 verse 7 says, And God breathed into his nostrils, the man that he formed. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So the breath was what powered the existence of that man. But that man was only soul and body, carrying breath. That was why the issue of being born again was not a phenomenon that was discussed in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, according to the order of Jesus Christ, when Jesus began to talk to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, he said, except a man be born again. Of course, you can give birth to a man naturally because that which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now the man of Genesis was not born of the spirit. He was born of the flesh. That's why the Bible called him a living soul. But when Jesus was talking about being born again, he was saying that the Spirit of God will come into man and live as a person. So that the spiritual dimension of man that was hibernated can be unlocked. Do you know what it means to a, for a system, a laptop to be hibernated? Huh? You know what? When you hibernate a system, it is not completely off, but it's not functional. So the spiritual dimension of man in the Old Testament was hibernated. That is the, that's the reason why most of the workings of God in the Old Testament were physical. Because that was the only way you could convince a man that wasn't spirit. All he had was breath. Huh? Job chapter 33 verse 4. He says, Job chapter 33. He said, The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. You see, he's talking about breath. The same way if you go to Ezekiel chapter 37, what happened to the dry bones when they became corpses? He said, Son of man, prophesy to the wind and call for the breath, for breath, or, or the breath to come on these ones, that they will live. It was breath that came upon them, not spirit. Even though that breath was still the spirit of God, but not the spirit of God in his fullness. Not the spirit of God as a person. It was when Jesus died that that possibility was unlocked. That a man could be born again. How? By the spirit of God coming to live as a person in a man. So the man in Christ Jesus in the New Testament is now spirit, soul, soul and body. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 He said, May the God of peace sanctify you wholly and I pray that your spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless. This is now the man of the New Testament. Spirit, soul and body. But the man of the Old Testament, the man of Genesis was breath, soul and body. Now Job 32 you will understand better. When he says that the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. So when God breathed into Adam, it was a part of himself that he gave Adam. So that that body that was dead can come alive and can interact as an intelligent being. It's more like AI. When you create a robot and they give it what they call artificial intelligence. In other words, this is not innate intelligence. That, cre that creation was not intelligent in itself. But you, you formulated something. You formulated an intelligent system and inseminated into, into, into that creation so that the creation can live and interact as though it was a, a human being. But the intelligence it's working with is borrowed. They call it AI. Is that true? So Job said there is a spirit in man. And this spirit is in the form of a breath. 
that this breath gives man understanding it makes man an intelligent being not a robot it makes man a higher classified creation than animals it gives man an intelligence that is not common to animals it is possible because of the breath of God there are four things I will tell us that I want us to note number one I will be slow for those who are writing God works by his divine patterns in the establishment of things God works by his divine patterns in the establishment of things God works by his divine patterns in the establishment of things John chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God it says and all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made that's verse 3 so the reason why God began the beginning with the word was so that the word can become the template for the creation of all things the word can become the pattern the word can become the image in those days how do they design a signboard an artist will cut letters with paper isn't it and then take paint and then impress those papers on the signboard and when they remove the paper you find the exact letters according to the image that was cut out in the paper that means that you can't correct anything on that signboard again if you if you need to change anything you have to change it at the image form on the paper so that's what the word was that everything that will exist in heaven and on earth god wanted it to be patterned according to the word god wanted everything to find their being their existence the intelligence with which they would thrive and the order the kind they will produce god wanted it to be part and parcel of the world so in genesis chapter 1 26 to 27 in the creation of man for instance huh? man was created according to the image of god the bible says let us make man in our image and according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea the beds of the air over the cattle over the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth verse 27 so god made man in his image and after his likeness male and female created he them so man was created in the image of god but in chapter 2 verse 7 the bible says god formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life so that man became a living soul chapter 1 26 to 27 is what i call the creation of purpose chapter 2 verse 7 is what i call the formation of existence this is i'm talking about patterns now huh remember point number one that god works by his divine patterns in the establishment of everything that god will establish has a pattern god is not spontaneous in creation god is spontaneous in his move but not spontaneous in creation god is spontaneous in response but not spontaneous according to his will before time began everything that will exist he had already patterned them he had created a template so that nothing will be by accident because if anything was created by accident then that thing will have the absence of the will of god and that means god will not find his image on that thing and god will not be able to superimpose the government of his kingdom over that thing the influence of the government of god's kingdom cannot rest on that thing that's why god did not allow for spontaneity when he was creating that's why when two love birds sleep with each other when they are not married and the person gets pregnant they say they mistakenly got pregnant you know that's foolish talk you don't say it's mistakenly when you were doing it nobody told you so just you know to see to somebody amen you are quiet what's the what's the problem are you guilty as charged 
Amen. Amen. So, they may call the action a mistake, but that thing is not a mistake. So, when God created man, in chapter 1 of Genesis, the purpose of man was created. That's why he specified it there. Let him have dominion after our likeness. Let him live in our image. That means God is intelligent. God has reasoning. God thinks. It's unfortunate that a lot of believers have thrown away their reason. And because of that, they are victim to so many things that common sense should have helped them avoid. God who created everything you find in your life was created in the image of God. Everything you find in yourself by default when you were born is in God. So if God created reasoning in you, he's not a fool. He too has reasoning. He said, come now, let us So there are times, it's not every time you pray about, no, there are things that God has given you a reason to think. And then in chapter 2 was the formation of existence. This is how man will exist. How? God breathed into his nostrils a dead body. That means that man was formed to exist by depending on God. In fact, in theology, there's something called anthropology. Anthropology is the study of man. It's from the word anthropos, which means man. The word anthropos means man. And then logos, which means study. The study of man. The word anthropos there, the original meaning is a being that was created to look up. Did you get that? Or you are, your mind is in the shawarma somewhere. The word anthropos, which defines the study of man, the original meaning is a being created to look up. Who is up? God. That means man was created to naturally depend on God. That is why you find chaos and trouble when a man decides to live independent from God. And that was what Adam did in Genesis chapter 3. When he ate that fruit, what was it? Was it a big, what's the big deal about eating a fruit? It was not about the fruit. It was that Adam distorted the divine pattern and decided to declare independence. That was why God chased him out of the garden. Since you have decided to distort my pattern, I created you to always depend on me. But since you have decided to do things your own way, there is no way you can exist within my environment of provision. Because it is a man that submits to God's vision that will experience God's provision. The choice is yours. The, the kind of life you want to live. is either you are depending on God as a child depends on their father. And you know, a child doesn't worry about anything. They can ask their parents for anything. They believe in their mind, in their minute reasoning. They believe that their father can provide everything. Fathers, praise the Lord. Okay, they answered. You know why they didn't answer very loud? It's the burden of fatherhood. Amen. Some of them just bought milk and uh, baby food. 20,000. So there's no strength to answer again. Amen. May God bless all the fathers in Jesus' name. Amen. And the upcoming fathers, may God prepare you for the race ahead. Amen. amen. You are shouting amen now. When the thing reach. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 to 12, we find the creation of vegetation on the earth. The Bible says, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind. Whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and the herb that yields seed according to its kind. This is another pattern for vegetation, that everything was going to produce according to its kind. So, God operates with divine patterns. God has his patterns for the establishment of everything. Your destiny has a pattern in God that you must discover by the revelation of the Spirit, following it by the wisdom of God and making predictable outcomes through life. 
every assignment that God gives to you has a pattern in which it will be done in mathematics they will tell you that you should show walking you know I used to crack a joke those days I said that when we're in primary school you can do anything and get away with it as far as you feel the answer you are good and many of us were scoring high in mathematics when you enter secondary school and you wrote Juno why they started sharing another answer sheet what's this one for show walking is that true so God is more interested in the patterns that he uses for the establishment of things number two in creation God's pattern is to create container before infusing it with content in creation God's pattern is to create containers before infusing its content God's pattern is to create containers before infusing its content God does not create content before container he creates container before content and God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life a man became a living soul container before content do you know that that content that was the breath that he breathed into the nostrils of man that breath captured everything that was written in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 27 because let's do a little brainstorming Genesis 1 26 27 so God said and God said let us make man in our image and after our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and this and this and that and that then in verse 27 the bible says so god made man god created man not make in his own image in the image of god he created him male and female he created them but you don't find in chapter one god addressing this man the reason is because this man was not a physical creation that's why I said it was, it, this was the creation of purpose. In fact, the word create in verse 27 is in the same sentence with the word image. Because the word create, when you look at it in the root Hebrew word, it speaks of your imagination. So, it is safe to say that the man that was created in that verse 27 of chapter 1 was created in God's imagination just like when you want to fry bones all the process and the finished works let me use that word the finished product is in your mind you have a picture of what you want to create isn't it unfortunately sometimes many many ladies have a good picture in their mind and then they have an abstract it's not man they created it's a monster you want to cook spaghetti and then in your mind what I ordered versus what I so everything that happened in chapter 1 verse 26 to 27 happened in God's mind and God blessed them and said be fruitful and multiply blah 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 but then you come to chapter 2 and the Bible says that God formed man so which man was he talking about in chapter 1 his mind if you don't believe why did God create imaginations in you God created imaginations in you so that you can imagine nations for your destiny because as a man thinketh in his heart when you get to heaven and you don't need to wait for Jesus to come to get to heaven but when you get to heaven you will discover that your thoughts are faster than your speech in the realm of the spirit your thoughts carry life that's why Job said in that chapter 32 of verse 8 in amplified translation he said there is a spirit 
a vital force of intelligence in man vital means living that your intelligence carry life even ai has already ai at least explains it to us that they create devices can i have a phone they create devices now this is a non-living thing according to you isn't it this is a living thing oh because it has intelligence like a living thing you can instruct it there are some of you that have phones that have voice to text you can be talking and it's typing there are some of you that have phones that by looking at it it unlocks the screen isn't it so in the realm of the spirit the technology of the realm of the spirit is that your thoughts are living beings so the reason why certain people are always depressed is because in their mind that's the picture they see so they've given life to a false picture and that's why even though god says that i will extend my peace to her like a river the reason why they are lacking peace is because they have a picture that must be changed there is a living being in their mind that as far as the realm of the spirit is concerned that becomes their definition until there is a change in that picture that's why paul said that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened so god creates container before he puts content god creates a man before he infuses purpose God creates a territory before he sends an evangelist. God creates a home before he puts in it a house. I know you think a house is this building. But if you read the Bible, most times when the Bible says the house of Jacob, do you think he was talking about a building? When he says the house of Jacob, the house of Israel, the house of Simeon, what is he talking about? Everything that comes out of your loins your genealogy so God will create a home that means that that marriage between you and that lady or between you and that guy was not by accident before the both of you were born before your grandparents existed in eternity God had crafted and fashioned that the two of you somehow will meet yourself and this is going to be the home and this is what God will do with this home and then when you come into time two of them are born one is born in the uk the other one is born in sapele in delta state and by divine operations two of them will meet in oxford university and then they say they fall in love not knowing that that love was also part of god's purpose because god will create container before content that's why god looks for a vessel before he pours the anointing because he creates container before if the vessel is not yielded forget about the anointing the tap will remain closed so if you want to see the full import of the power of god at work in your life become a yielded vessel then you will see how much god can flow through a man are you getting blessed number three be seated please In keeping with divine patterns, in keeping with divine patterns, God will only empower what he manufactured. In keeping with divine patterns, comma, then these two sentences, God will only empower what he manufactured. God will only manifest what he created. In keeping with divine patterns, God will only empower what he manufactured. God will only manifest what he created. Philippians 1.6 He that has begun a good work in you is able to perform it, to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. God will only empower what he manufactured. God will only manifest what he created you need to understand the meaning of manifest to manifest means to give life to something 
please bring reverend to the front to manifest means to give life to something listen here to manifest means to cause to exist a particular thing the bible says god formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became man became that is manifestation the reason why man could manifest was because he was created by God. It was God that formed man from the dust of the ground. So if another spirit was responsible for the formation of that man, he wouldn't get the empowerment that comes directly from God. Are you hearing me? So when an idol is crafted in your village, those people that crafted the idol, they will need to beseech the demon spirit that that idol is meant to adumbrate or represent so that the spirit can now come to give life because in the realm of the spirit it is possible for a being to give his life to give his intelligence to a thing even in the natural we call it cl a clone you can clone something after you so in the realm of the spirit spirit beings can give life they can give their intelligence they can give their being to function in a thing and that's what you call manifest so manifestation as far as god is concerned is only due to when god has created something only when god creates something will he cause it to manifest according to his purpose so if god has created your purpose if god has created your destiny he will cause you to manifest according as he created not as you want you know i was talking with a pastor friend from germany this week that most times the reason why we pray to God over some things and we don't seem to get answers or God seems to be quiet even when we pray long is because sometimes we want God to answer according to what we want and God will not answer according to what you want God will answer according to his will so anytime you find yourself praying over an issue and God is not talking check what's in your heart it may be that you are trying to push God to say what you want and it's a dangerous place it happened to Balaam God told Balaam, don't go there. Don't follow this man. Balaam refused because he saw money. He left. God now said, okay. God spoke to him again and said, okay, go, but only what I tell you. Now, that, it was not God's will for him to go. So from that point, God was, the reason why God had to, why did I enter here now? The reason why God had to, uh, 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 God had to compromise with Balaam, let me use that word, was because Balaam, as at that time, apart from moses the only other prophet that had the spiritual stature that moses had was balaam and god knew that because of balaam's understanding of the realm of the spirit there are things that balaam can legislate from the heavens over the earth that must manifest god knew that balaam by reason of his interaction both with god and with demons Balaam understood certain laws in the realm of the spirit. This may not be for everybody, but it will be for a few people who are spiritual. Balaam knew certain laws. And you see, the thing about the laws that God has placed in the realm of the spirit is, it doesn't matter who is applying them. It doesn't matter who is obeying them. As long as you obey them completely, they will manifest. There are spirit agencies. There are spirit beings. There are spirit um, 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 technologies assigned to command manifestation to the one who keeps those laws. For instance, the Bible says as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, it doesn't matter whether it's a believer, whether it's a Muslim, whether it's a Buddhist, whether it's a traditional worshiper. Seed time and harvest. That's why a Yahoo boy will give and experience abundance. Not because God wants to bless him, but he understood the law that God has placed. And all of the laws of God, this is not part of my teaching, but this is for somebody. This is a school for somebody. But you see, all the laws that God has placed, he has set power systems to enforce the manifestations of this law. That when you obey it, it will manifest in your favor. So God knew that Balaam had that intelligence. And if God does not do anything to stop Balaam or compromise with Balaam, Balaam could go there and curse them. Because the king told him, he said, For I have heard that him who you curse is cursed, and him who you bless is blessed. That's why God told Balaam, don't go. But then you have God coming again and say, go. So be very careful when God has told you no to a thing, and later God says yes. Check what was on your heart. 
it could be, you have pushed God to say what he doesn't want and maybe because of your work with him God has to just compromise at least I give you another example God told Moses speak to the rock and water will come out what did Moses do struck the rock did water come out yes you're welcome sir and your wife God bless you God bless you who brought the water out it was God isn't it ask yourself so if God knew that Moses did the wrong thing why did God produce result it's because of relationship so don't try to force that lady on God as your wife be careful God does not change if you understand divine patterns God does not change his word yes from yesterday is yes today he said, let your yea be yea and no be no. If God told you yes yesterday and now God came and, or if God said no yesterday and today God is saying yes, you didn't hear God. The Bible says God will give, give them up to a reprobate heart. So when God has tried to convince people to stop doing something and they refuse, he can give them up to their own will so that's why you heard yes today meanwhile God told you no yesterday that yes you heard today is your own will at that point go and seek counsel and you know I made a statement at the beginning of this year that I won't talk twice over an issue if you come to me to pray on an issue and I say this is what I perceive or this is what God is saying don't come back again what do you want So let's go back to our teaching that was for somebody you know everybody here you come with one thing or the other in your heart so God has a way of meeting everybody number three I said in keeping with divine patterns God will only empower what he manufactures God will only manifest what he created Romans 8 verse 15 to 19 He says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children then heirs, and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if we indeed suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which will be revealed in us. For the NX expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of sons of God. Look at where we are coming from. That the spirit of God bears witness with our spirits that we are children of God. And so because we are children of God, born of the spirit, our God is concerned about our manifestation. And the world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. So if you want God to empower a thing, make sure he's at the foundation of that thing make sure he's at the beginning make sure he began it don't start it and go to god it's wrong don't start the relationship and then go to your pastor and say this is the girl i want to marry you know what your pastor will do if he's a righteous man he will just bless you people what you will do is when you start liking the girl go to your pastor and say this is the girl i like oh what are you seeing that's the right way and it's not because anybody wants to control you. Who has time for you? I will send pastors after my heart that they will teach you in the way of understanding and knowledge, isn't it? You know, like me, if you start the thing and you bring it to me, in fact, you even engage the person, then you now bring the engagement. Ah, straight to the altar. Just they go like that. Like pilot, I'll wash my hand. There's no time. You see, you... <laughs> oh god you know <laughs> there's not enough time to pray you see there's so much to pray about i can't be carrying another burden on my head let me advise any man of god here please once people start something and they have gone far before coming to talk to you about it eh save yourself don't be involved just bless them and let them go because if the team fail they will say that you were part of it you want to contest for election you didn't go and seek your man of god first you didn't go and pray to find out if it's god's will and if god will back you you went and bought card in apc 
and then one month to the primaries that's when you are looking for your man of god ask yourself your other colleagues from the other side that have jasmine and juju men is it not their juju men that will see for them first whether coast don't clear you know of all the spiritual people christians are the most lazy i'm sorry to say just the truth if christians were as fervent as idol worshippers or witches i mean the sons of god will be manifesting so you want God to help you empower something, let him start it. It was God that sent Jesus as the savior of Israel. It was God that released him from River Jordan. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Took him to the wilderness and when he was done with that test, the Bible says he returned in the power of the spirit. Why? Because all through from the conception till his birth till this time, it was the will of God. A zone where you are immune to satanic witchcraft attacks is when you are in the center of the will of God. If you didn't send yourself and God sent you, I'm telling you, demons will be stranded before you. Take it from me. Number four. So as long as divine patterns are kept, God will release his glory. He will release his empowerment. He will release his spirit to manifest. Number four. Did I say number four? Okay, no need for number four. Now, how does God empower men? By infusing himself into them. How does God empower men? By infusing himself into them. We're about rounding up now. One secret. How does God empower men? Simple. He infuses himself into them. Job 33 verse 4. The spirit of God has made me. The breath of the almighty has given me life or gives me life. God empowers men by infusing himself into them. God told Moses, say, I'll take the spirit that is on you and place it on the 70 elders. And the Bible says when God did it, they all began to prophesy. You want to experience divine empowerment? The secret is simple. That God will infuse himself into you. In Genesis 2 verse 7, the Bible says God breathed into the breast nostrils of man. The breath of life. That was divine empowerment for man to function and to exist. The breath of God is the secret to divine empowerment the breath of god is the secret to supernatural empowerment you want to walk through this life empowered you want to walk through this life with the advantage of the spirit realm then you need the breath of god to come upon you that's why i started by giving you those three points i said god has a pattern in the establishment of things that he works with god creates container before putting content the content we are talking about today is the breath of god not just into your body but into your business do you know the breath of god can be infused into your business the breath of god can be infused into your ministry the breath of god can be infused into your career there is a spirit in man a vital force please keep that amplified translation i believe that's that's going to be the verse for the whole of the night there is a spirit a vital force an intelligence in man and the breath of the almighty gives man understanding when you receive an infusion of the life of god in you you have been empowered for success you have been empowered for progress you have been empowered to fulfill divine purpose all that god would need to do to you at this point is to infuse some dimension of himself into you anything that god puts himself into there are benefits you will find in the natural as a sign that God has infused himself in that thing. When the breath of God comes into or upon a thing, there are natural benefits you'll find. There are physical manifestations you'll find. And you know that the breath of God is on this thing. There's something called artificial intelligence that can be put in a non-living thing. How about spiritual intelligence? How about divine intelligence? God can put it in your business. 
God can put it in your academics and you will excel beyond limits. God can put it in your career and you can rise to high points, high places in few years. Anything around your life that is malfunctioning is malfunctioning because it lacks the breath of God, which is the secret to supernatural empowerment. You may not believe what I'm saying until life has hit you a little bit. Then you will understand that you have to be spiritual to survive on this earth. Everything on this earth is designed to control its inhabitants. It is not natural to survive and thrive without any issue. No. The world we live in is dysfunctional. Though it belongs to God, but it has been dysfunctioned by the sin of Adam. You know, God said, cost is the ground for your sake. And I hear a lot of um, new creation preachers say that that cost has been taken away in Jesus Christ. It's a lie. You don't read your Bible well. It's the cost of the law of Moses that was taken in Jesus, not the cost of the ground. That's why after the flood, what did God do? A cost it. He now blessed Noah. Because blessings are greater than curses. That is why when the blessing of God is on your life, in form of his breath. Because how does God bless people? He speaks to them. And when you speak, what comes out of your mouth? Breath. So, when a man is blessed, I have a series on that. The blessing. The secret to surviving in any economy. It's a series. We are getting there soon. A cost earth, a cost land. They say Meduguri, everything is extreme. They say Meduguri, the poverty ratio is high. They say Meduguri, if you don't have NGO job or you are not a military personnel, there's nothing for you. But bring a man that carries the breath of God on him. Plus, plus, minus is equals to what? Plus. So the breath of God, which is the spirit of life, which is the breath of life, is the secret to divine empowerment. Finally, before we pray, benefits of receiving the breath of God. Benefits of receiving the breath of God, in bracket, divine empowerment. If you have written it, I'd like you to pray in the spirit for one minute because something is about to open up for somebody. Right there where you are seated, lift your voice and pray in the spirit for one minute. God is about to open somebody's eyes. The benefits that can manifest in your life when the breath of God comes upon you. Somebody's eyes are about to be opened. Somebody's destiny is about to change. You are about to see the missing link all these years. You are about to see a secret that has been devoid of you all these years that is about to position you for an advantage. Lord, open my eyes. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. I receive, I manifest your power. Lifted up, exalted, I receive and manifest your power, your wisdom.
to the nation to Jesus lift that up glorify of receiving the breath of God. When you understand these five benefits, you will know that all it takes is for God to breathe on you. The next time you go to pray, all you will ask is, Lord, breathe upon me. Yeah. <laughs> Psalms 104 verse 30, verse 29 and verse 30. Psalms 104 verse 29 and verse 30. Please, quickly. When you hide your face, they are troubled and dismayed. No, let's go to New King James. So the book of Job that you will find, you will have amplified. Say, so you send forth your spirit. Verse 29, please. You hide your face, they are troubled. You take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. Look at the next verse. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And you renew the face of the earth. That means anything that is dead remains dead until the breath of God is added to it. Benefits of receiving the breath of God. Number one, quickly. Wisdom and supernatural intelligence. Wisdom and supernatural intelligence. 1 John 2 verse 20 and verse 27. He says, but you have an unction for the, from the Holy One. For you know all things. 20. You have an unction. I'd like to explain this verse. You have an unction. You have an anointing from the Holy One. And you know all things. What it means is two things. Number one, it means you know all the things that you should know part time. Then number two, you know the source of all things. It doesn't necessarily mean that you know everything. No, no. Positionally, it's true that you know all things. Positionally in Christ Jesus, in the realm of the spirit, you have the ability, you have the advantage because of the Holy Spirit to know all things. But in reality, what that scripture means is that part time, per season, you know everything you need to know. Why? Because you have an anointing. There's a supernatural force living inside of you that gives you the access to the things that are needed for your growth and for your advantage part time, per season. Number two, it also means that you know the source of all things. So, when something is given to you as a revelation, you can probe the source of that revelation because the Holy Spirit is not the only spirit that can bequeath revelation. It is natural for spirits to, to, to cast revelations or visions on humans. Every spirit has revelatory capacity. For instance, I've been preaching to you now for almost about an hour, revealing many things to you, isn't it? That's because as a spirit, my spirit has revelatory capacity that is, in, that is ignited and enhanced by the Holy Ghost. Demon spirits also have revelatory capacity. Spirits of hell can reveal. They can cast revelations on native doctors. That's how a native doctor will know that they planted a charm somewhere. So don't get deceived. When a man is operating by a false spirit and he has revelatory capacities, even Satan has it too. But he says you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know the source of things. A vision can come and you can tell that this is from the pit of hell. You can tell that this is from the spirit. You can tell that this is just the opinion of an individual. Verse 27. He said, but the anointing which you have received from the Holy One abides in you you have to be very fast, please, on the console. 
and you do not need that anyone teach you but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true you now see why i'm talking about source isn't it because he's talking about you being taught and it was in this same chapter that, that paul john spoke about the antichrist and false teachers that anointing abides in you as wisdom and supernatural intelligence and it teaches you it can teach you what you need to know part time it can teach you to probe the source of things and so that you will not need any human confirmation because you have received it from the anointing that dwells in you wisdom and supernatural intelligence jesus said in john 16 13 that when the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truths the spirit of truth is the life of truth the force of truth which is the holy spirit he gives you supernatural intelligence that means that you know things you are not taught he gives you wisdom that means you understand divine patterns that produces or profiles solutions to problems wisdom and supernatural intelligence that was what was exhibited in Adam Genesis chapter 2 verse 19 to 20 the Bible says for Adam there was no found there was not found at a helper and in verse 20 the Bible says or verse 19 yes that God gathered all the beasts and all the cattle and everything he created all the animals to Adam he said to see what he would call them it's not like God wanted Adam to guess no God was so sure of what he had created there is a spirit in man there is a breath in man and that breath gives man understanding so it was a test run he brought the animals to man to see what Adam will call them and the Bible says whatever Adam called them that verse 19 so whatever the name that Adam gave them whatever he called each living creation creature that was its name and that means that was his existence that was his intelligence so when Adam saw a cat and called it lion he gave intelligence by that name he gave purpose by that name he gave existence he gave continuity everything was captured in fact the lion had his sense of being when Adam gave it that name lion if Adam had seen a peacock and said this is my helper that God will give to me from that day peacocks would have been the women and then when God had created women they would have gone to the animal kingdom because the Bible says in the next verse that there was no helper found that means Adam by the supernatural intelligence of God in him looked at all the animals and knew how did he know it was he taught anywhere no there is a spirit in man and the breath of the almighty gives him understanding it's beyond your academic qualification that's why a man may not go to school but when that breath comes upon him he can sit eloquent people intelligent people he can see professors and confound them with wisdom why there is a spirit in man which school did jesus go to at the age of 12 that he was teaching the teachers of the law and i'm not in any way saying that you shouldn't go to school and study but i'm just saying that when it comes to knowledge it's in dimensions there is a dimension of knowledge that you receive when you are not taught it is called the wisdom of god it is by that wisdom you can navigate life it is by that wisdom you can wake up tomorrow and know that there is an accident projected for me so i'm not going out it is by that wisdom that Jesus looked at the sickness of Lazarus. He looked at the death of Lazarus, say that the that the that God will be glorified in him. They say, Master, was this man born blind? Uh, this man is born blind. Did he sin or his father or mother sin? Is he generational cause or is he a sin? Jesus never met the man before but by this wisdom he said no that the works of God will be worked in him so somebody can carry an affliction for 30 years and the only reason for why he or she suffered 30 years is so that a day will come where in the public you know face of thousands of people God can bring healing to that man and glorify his name who told you what you are suffering is not going to glorify God in the long run you say but 
my friends, their own is better. At least they had a silver spoon. God, they had a good start in life. They grew up under rich parents. Me, I grew up in a poverty-stricken home. Even my school fees, I hustled to pay. Now I'm in foreign level. How am I going to finish? How am I going to spend money for project? That the works of God will be worked in him. Finish that school first. Then in two years, God gives you a miraculous job. And you shift from penury to being a multi-millionaire. And God presents you to the whole world and says, Look what I can do with a man that came from nothing. He uses the weak things of this world to confound. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared. You, you, you know, we, we are not able to endure. The Bible says, who for the joy of what was set ahead. Sometimes you need to take your eyes off the process and put it on the goal. The process may not encourage you, but look at the end. What is God going to work out of my affliction? Job said that even though my skin is destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. And the Bible says, and God restored the latter end of Job. Let me prophesy to somebody before you leave tonight that everything that looks like a disadvantage in your life, may my God turn it around in your favor. May my God turn it around in your favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. God knows how to turn a mess to a message. A trial to a triumph. When his breath comes on it, wisdom, supernatural intelligence. God, you called me into ministry. Why are you calling me to start in Zamfara? Zamfara. There are more, some cities in Nigeria that are more popular than even the name of the state, Zamfara. Is it that you are paying me for my sins or what to suffer? God says, no. Just remain laboring there with those five people. And in your dreams in the night, he will be showing you nations. <laughs> when the season comes and God has found you faithful, all he needs to do is breathe on you. And he will turn the attention of the world to Zamfara. They say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip saw, I can't see. When he came to see the non-entity from Nazareth, the non-entity told him, I, before Philip met you under the tree, I saw you. He said, my Lord and my God. <laughs> Jesus says, he, because I told you we're under the tree, get ready, this non-entity, you will see even angels ascending and descending. When the breath of God comes on you, it releases wisdom and supernatural intelligence. Number two, divine direction. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21. It says you shall hear a voice behind you that will say this is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right or whenever you turn to the left. In other words, you will hear precise, you know, direction with precision and accuracy. Wisdom that gives you direction so that you don't go to the right or to the left. The right or left there means that you don't dilly-dally or you keep trying or experimenting things. You will walk circumspectly knowing this is the business to do. You will know this is the house to rent. This is the property to buy. This is the year to start building. Instead of buying a car, build now. Instead of building, buy lands now. Why? You shall hear a voice. Divine direction. So you don't do trial and error. That is never God's will. God never created any man to live by puzzle. Divine direction. Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27. This divine direction comes when the spirit of God, the breath of God is infused in a man. I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Divine direction. That breath of the Lord gives you wisdom. The profit of wisdom in its, is in its direction. The Bible says if the axe is not sharp, then much effort will be wasted in cutting the tree. Say, but wisdom is profitable to direct. So sharp the axe and what would have taken you one hour to fell the tree, it will take you five minutes. Let me relate that to somebody's destiny. 
instead of God giving you a job now you start your career and you just keep going what God wants to do is train and develop you develop yourself you know why because please come sir if you work hard at your job you will increase your income are you hearing me but if you work hard on yourself, you increase your value, which will increase your worth. So which one is better? Now that job that you want God to give you, he will give you. But it's a job that is from 8 to 6. And by the time one year is over, you don't know what you did with your life. And because God has weightier matters of destiny ahead, he may keep you away from that job for 3 years. Your friends call it delay. But ask God why Jesus spent 30 years and nobody knew him. And then in three years, he shook the world till today. That's a question for somebody. So God called you as a minister and said, Ah, the nations will hear your voice. And after five years, even Mary that you are staying have not heard your voice. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Every time you find delay that God is responsible for, huh, is a mirage for speed. Every delay that God is responsible for is a mirage. He has just deceived the devil. The devil said, this one is still here after five years. Let's attack other people. He doesn't know that that's the one that will be a terror to his kingdom. And God keeps you there working on you. Teaching you how to, perfecting you on your skills. Understanding the realm of the spirit. Understanding the anointing. You see one vision and you want to jump and tell the whole world. God says, no, keep quiet. Understand how to navigate the realm of the spirit. And then after five years, one day, you stand before a small group of people and you begin to prophesy with accuracy and precision, with distinction, as if you have a PhD. Where did this one come from? He was in the cave. Oh, you are a wonderful singer. Beautiful voice. You even have idea for your albums. You, you have already written down all your songs. Three albums. You are waiting to go to the studio. And for five years, God has not allowed you to go to the studio. God is saying it's not just about album. Interact with the realm of the spirit. I want to put a sound from eternity in your heart. So that through your sound, other worshippers will find their sound. You are glorious, so glorious in your way. Wait. How many of you know when that song was released, there was a revival that came in the body of Christ? There are many of you that are worship leaders, even many music ministers now that God is using mightily. That was the song, or those were the songs that helped them ascend into the realm of the spirit to get their own song. So these ones are stars, but this one is a legend. That's what God wants to make out of you. In your light, we see light. That when somebody is spiritually dry, all he needs to do is play your message. And in the midst of his prayerlessness and in the midst of his weakness, just the plane of your message, will, that person is transported to heaven and he returns back with grace and with strength and with vigor, ready to shake his world just by listening to one message. Because God has infused a sound in you. It's divine direction that, does, that, that teaches you this. So when God keeps you at the spot, you wait patiently. Number three, creativity. I rush now because I want us to pray. Creativity is one of the benefits of receiving the breath of God. Hmm. I wish I had time for this. In Genesis 1 verse 2, the Bible says the Spirit of God moved upon the waters. Chapter 2 verse 7, it was the breath of God that he put into man. Job 26 verse 13, he said by your spirit you have adorned, you have fashioned the heavens. So the spirit of God is the spirit of creativity. 
Psalms 33 verse 6. He said, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. The spirit of God is the spirit of creativity. That spirit is what created imaginations in the heart of man. According to Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11, it says he has put eternity in the heart of man. Eternity means infinity. Now your imaginations have an infinite uh, range or perspective. You can imagine things that are even beyond the natural. So what the Spirit of God will do is when the breath of God comes on your mind, it gives you supernatural abilities to be creative. Your mind becomes empowered to create things that are not yet seen. For by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which appear were not made by things which are seen. Those things that are responsible for the things we see are unseen. But when the breath of God comes on your imaginations, you, are, you have access to see the things that are unseen that are responsible for the things that are seen. And then when you bring it into this earth, they call it invention. They call it technology. And it fosters and facilitates human existence and survival. All of these cars they are manufacturing, where do you think they get them from? There has to be a dimension where they are seeing these things. The kind of cars they are creating, I don't understand. I saw a car that they created. Is it Honda or what? It knows how to do They call it a crab walk. That means all the wheels can turn. You know the way the front wheel turns? The back wheels can turn like that. So the car can stay on one spot and turn 360. They call it crab walk. That's the future. I say, God punish the devil. <laughs> we are still here buying C180, C... 230, you buy C300. Ah, all the girls will follow you. <laughs> Meanwhile, they are talking about cars that. That was a mistake, you know. Creativity. In Exodus 31, verse 1 to 11, and 35, verse 30 to 35, there was such a man that had the breath of God on him, Bezalel by name. Creative. He was the one who fashioned the tabernacle that God showed Moses. How is it possible that you are able to replicate exactly what you did not see? It was Moses that saw the vision, but Bezalel created everything such that the Bible says, when they had finished it, the glory of God inhabited it. Supernatural creativity. Some of you, that's what you need for your business. Stop trying to do what other people are doing. It's laziness. Wait upon God till he breathes on your mind. And moi moi that people eat and throw away, God will use it to elevate you. I heard of a woman who, it was selling of moi moi that took her to the White House. Go and browse, a Nigerian woman. Browse it online, you see. Moi moi, moi moi, took her. It's creativity. So it's not about starting the business. It's about the skill by which it is marketed. Creativity. If people like Jeff Bezos and all of these billionaires, Look at the, they, they change the order of things. That somebody without any building or without any company can stay in his house and run a global shopping conglomerate. He's not producing anything, but he's selling things. It's after he became a billionaire, one year later, that he went and built office. Where are Nigerians? Where are Christians? Some of you, God has put in your mind apps that you can develop that will turn your life into a living wonder. Some of you, God has put in your mind the means by which people's life can be easy. But because it looks strange to you, you, you don't know that that's the creativity of God infused in you that God wants you to tap into. You are afraid because you know it will tax you. Creativity. Number four, revival. Psalms 85 verse 6 it Say, will thou not revive us again O God Hosea 6 verse 2 after two days he shall revive us and on the third day he shall cause us to live in his sight when the breath of God comes on you it brings revival revival means restoring life to anything that is dead 
In 1 Kings 17 verse 22, a man called Elijah laid on the body of a dead boy and the boy came back to life. A man called Elisha in 2 Kings 13, 21 that had the breath of God on him. Even though he was dead, they threw the corpse of a dead man. He was dead and his, his body decayed. Only bones were remaining. They threw the body of a dead man on his bones and the dead man jacked back to life. So the breath of God was so much on Elisha that even his bones carried residue on it. Revival. When God puts you with his breath upon you in a dead church, that church experienced revival. Listen, let me tell you, revival does not have to be a program. Just carry, let's find a man that carries the breath of God on him. It will happen anywhere. It can happen on your street. It can happen in your office. It can happen in the marketplace. Revival, the ability to bring life to enforce the supernatural over the natural. He said, we thou not revive us again. And now in Hosea 6 verse 2, he says, after two days he will revive us and on the third day we will live in his sight. That was a prophecy about, you know, in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God will have to come on dead individuals before they are revived. In Ezekiel 37, dead bodies, dead bones, the breath of God came on them, they were revived. But in the New Testament, you don't need to wait for the breath of God to come on you again. You now carry the breath of God inside of you. Romans 14 verse 9 said it is Christ who died and rose again and revived. King James translation. It is Christ who died and rose again. Both died and rose and revived. Past tense. That means that as a man in Christ Jesus, because the breath of God is in you by the Holy Spirit, you can live naturally revived. The reason why many people's prayer life is going up and down is because they are living with a revelation that belongs to the Old Testament. They believe that there is a point where they can get to and they faint. Meanwhile, the Bible says that God gives power to the faint. How does, how does he give power to the faint? He puts his spirit into a man. But in the New Testament, you don't need, you are not like the Old Testament that the, the spirit of God will come to revive you. You now carry that spirit in you. So you can live always on fire for God. On your weakest days, you are the strongest. What did Paul say? Therefore, I would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ will rest upon me. He said, for when I am weak, then I am strong. I wish somebody got this, this revelation. You live revived. You live charged. There is life bursting forth from you. Your antennas are sharp 247. Gone are those days where you will be hot for two months and then later you just go down. No. Your body can be weak but your spirit that is recreated in Christ Jesus carrying the breath of God in it can never be weak. And so strength will no longer need to come from heaven upon you. Strength now comes from within you. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly far above all we ask or think according to the power that worketh where? Above you? No. Within you. To a point where you now become a source of life to people. There are some men of God that if they travel to a territory all the churches will experience revival. Imagine if we host a crusade here now and, and we bring God's servant Apostle Joshua Selman. One time I had the privilege of seeing him in his house. When we finished talking and he was to pray for me, he laid his hands on me. He was yawning. He was yawning. As he yawned so much that I didn't hear half of the sentence. But when I left that place, that was when I came back December. We had prophetic school. You saw what happened in prophetic school. Somebody was yawning. You must get there. You must know God to that level. Those kind of men, whether they pray or not, just carry them and land in a the territory. They just stand and say, all oh, the spirits in this territory, you know my voice. Clear. What kind of grace did Riyad Bonki carry? One week to the crusade, native doctors are coming out from the bush. 
All the people that they tied, all the families that they tied, they are carrying it. It is Christ who both died and rose again and revived past tense. You no longer need to live without the fire of God. You now carry the fire of God in you. You are now a walking manifestation of the power and the grace of God. It is you that God will use to electrocute other people into spiritual power. It is your presence that God will use to, to transport men into higher dimensions. There is an energy of God living inside of you. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That might is inside of you. There was a man called E.W. Kenyon. Powerful man of God. One of the people who brought the, the perspective of the new creation realities to the body of Christ. It was said that in his church, nobody remained sick. Nobody died till he died. If you die, he will wake you up. If somebody breaks a bone in their body, in the service there, he will go and speak to the bone and the bone will become straight. Go and browse about him. He held up E.W. Kenyon. In fact, some of the things he wrote in his book, it took nearly a hundred years for the body of Christ to accept as revelation. We were too far behind. We thought that he was the one who brought the perspective of the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The positional advantage of the believer. Keep his picture there. It was this man. You need to browse about this kind of people. You need to go and research about their work and enlighten yourself. For years, he was called a heretic because the revelation he brought was too far ahead of his generation. There are men like that in our days. Some of them in the prophetic, they are taking it to another dimension. I don't care whatever any blogger says, but as far as the prophetic is concerned in this Nigeria, I will always respect Apostle Johnson Suleiman. You think... If it is fake all these years, no, no. There are other prophets, who, but this one. Another man that I respect so much. You see, I don't care about, I don't, all of this scandal, all this, not my business. Though. Follow people for years. Another man that I salute is you, but angel. Listen. I'm not his follower, but I respect that man. You have to just believe it. Even if the people around him are fake, even if they are saying, let them say all they want. At least I've followed this man's ministry for over 10 years. It's impossible to fake what he's doing. It's impossible. Look at Nigeria in the AFCON, African Cup of Nations. It was obvious that we'll win it. Somebody came in his service and said, Nigeria will win. Oh. Everybody that saw Nigeria will win, they saw correctly. But I told God to change it. And he, saw, he, told, he told God, he said, can an eagle carry an elephant? That's what he told God. And God said, okay, I've changed it. And then all of a sudden, many people who prophesied, it looked as if they lied. They didn't lie. Nigeria was meant to win it. See the person that changed it. And if you know this man, listen, you know why I'm saying this today? We are in the body of Christ now. We just castigate and slander people. Let's talk about their good side. Eh, he was involved in this scandal in this country. Forget about it. You, you. If God called you and your life was filled with scandal, how would you feel if people don't want to listen to you simply because of a mistake? How would you feel? This guy has been prophesying on football matches for years. So over time, because he has been faithful in it he that is faithful in little is faithful in much god has now increased his authority that now no longer only prophesy on it but i give you the permission to change it argentina was playing finals with which country france and god spoke to him i said i give you the liberty to bring your date of birth and his date of birth was 1970 something that was the year that argentina won and while the match was going on somebody We have to press into God to carry that kind of power. In fact, you know what? I just preached the fifth point. Power and authority. So no need to go about it again. We need to contend for that kind of power. 
The reason why they don't respect Christianity again in our territory is because we have too many powerless people. The people that carry small, they are too few. When everybody can carry this thing. I and the children that the Lord has given to me are for signs and wonders. You that is there at the end of the overflow listening to me, you are here because God wants to infuse in you his breath so that you can become a walking expression of the technology of heaven. How did Jesus turn water to wine? All those disciples that follow Jesus, you think they, you, what, do you, what, do you think will, what do you think is operating in a man that will abandon everything and follow Jesus? If not that they have seen something supernatural. Not only revival, power and authority. Micah 3.8 says, I am full of power as by the Spirit of God. When the breath of God is upon you, you carry power. Are you ready to pray this night? Let me tell you this before we pray. Thank God for all the testimonies you hear here. You heard the testimonies today and you hear it every week. But I'm not stopping there. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. I will press into God until I become a mobile expression of power. That breath, when it comes upon you, it, it superimposes on your background, it superimposes on your weakness, it superimposes on any disadvantage you have. It translates you all of a sudden. It gives you re results that will force your critics to believe you. At a point when the miracles of Jesus became too much, the Pharisees could not hold it. Even the, there was a time they sent soldiers to go and arrest Jesus. The soldiers went there and they were held spellbound. They were charmed by Jesus' ministry. They came back without Jesus. The Pharisees said, where Jesus now? They say, we have never heard any man speak like that. They say, even you too, you have been charmed. There was a time even the Pharisees could not help, they could not deny that this one was a man of God. Nicodemus said, no man can do these things except God be with you. The only thing they were envious of was that he had gathered crowd. And it is true, when the breath of God is upon you, your life will produce results that will attract enemies. But don't be afraid. For he prepares a table before you in the presence of enemies. It's in the midst of adversity that God lifts men. Rise on your feet. We are going to pray. I'd like you to look for the hand of somebody. Look for somebody that you can pray with. We have just two minutes to pray this prayer. Look for somebody. Hold the hand of somebody that you believe can pray with you that you believe that carries the energy that you carry. Just one prayer. Oh Lord, let your breath come upon me. Lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. Let your breath come upon me. Let your breath come upon me. Let your breath rest upon me. Shaparata kateke batakasubia let the breath of God let the breath of life let the spirit of life come upon you let the breath of God come upon you Just breathe 
Put your name upon me. Shape kapata pata. Eshaba baba baba baba. 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 some people tonight. Listen. When it breathes upon your health, you will live healthy supernaturally. When it breathes upon your business, there can't be losses. When it breathes upon your investments, none can go down. None can be lost. When it breathes upon your marriage, is it, it's heaven on earth. When it breathes upon your soul, it is joy unspeakable. No depression. No discouragement. You become immune to pain and grief. When it breathes upon your mind, you become supernaturally creative. When it breathes upon your ministry, the world will hear your voice. When it breathes upon your ministry, you command supernatural results. Please lift your hands. Yahweh, why is your name written? Just preach your name upon me. Father, tonight I pray in the name of Jesus as we close. Let the breath of your spirit come upon everyone here. Breathe upon their bodies. Breathe upon their minds. Breathe upon their finances. Breathe upon their ministries. Breathe upon their homes. Breathe upon their families. Breathe upon their children. Breathe upon their academics. Breathe upon their career. Breathe upon all that concerns them. And I declare from today, let life come upon you. Let the supernatural life of the Holy Spirit come upon you. 
Everything that is dead comes back alive again. Everything that is dead comes back alive again. For some of them, Lord, breathe upon them the fresh anointing of your spirit. I see eight people that the spirit of revelation is resting upon right now. Eight of you, the spirit of revelation. Lord, breathe upon them that he will fill you with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. Let the spirit of revelation rest upon you. From today, let your visions be activated. Let your dreams be activated. Let your spiritual sight be activated. Let your ability to hear in the spirit be activated now. Let your life never remain the same. I declare to you that the wisdom and supernatural intelligence of the Lord is upon you. You will experience divine direction. The Lord empowers your mind to become super creative from today. Ideas will flow from the realm of eternity into your head. From today, the spirit that causes revival rests upon you from today. Go back and become an instrument of revival in your church, in your home, in your ministry, in your prayer group, in your prayer cell, in your fellowship. Go back and manifest the life of God. And finally, I declare to you from today, you will walk in the power of the Spirit of God. Your life will be an unending flow of signs and wonders. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. God bless you. We've overstretched our time. My goodness. I'll give an altar call now. Just briefly before we close. Everybody standing everywhere. Allow God to still do what he's doing. But you are here. You want to surrender to Jesus inside and outside. I want to give you an opportunity. You want to say yes to Jesus. You want to be born again. Or you want to rededicate your life afresh. Or there are some things you are struggling with that does not allow you to walk effectively with God. And you want him to deal with it. Wherever you are, I want you to walk to the front at the count of 10. Don't wait to be the last. There must be somebody here that is saying yes to Jesus tonight. Only when you are born again can his breath come upon you afresh. And as they come to the front, I'd like us to celebrate God for them. Number one, I'm counting. Two. Three. I'd like you to run from your seat. Run as though you are running away from a burning house. Don't wait to be the last. Four. Five. Inside and outside. They are coming. Keep clapping for them. Six. Seven. Jesus is calling you. Eight. Nine. Say yes to him tonight. And let him empower you afresh. And finally, ten. Please stretch your hands towards them. If you are coming out to join them, come out quickly before we say the last amen. Stretch your hands towards them and pray for them. Those of you in front, please put your right hand on your chest. I will lead you to make a prayer now. Your life is about to change. And if you are following online, you want to make a decision for Jesus, please repeat the prayer after me and we will tell you what you will do. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today I surrender to your Lordship. Be my Lord and Savior, both now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your right hand on your chest. Keep your left hand lifted. Father, I pray for these ones. By the authority of your word, we declare their sins forgiven, that their names are written in the Lamb's book of life. We declare them born again. Let your spirit come upon them. Let your spirit live in them. From today, we break the power of sin from their life. We break the power of Satan, witchcraft, hell, death, the grave. Every addiction is broken off their life from today. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. They serve you all the days of their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Those of you who made the prayer online, please do well to tell us where you are from and your name and our public relations department will reach out to you. Those of you in front, congratulations. You have a new life in Christ Jesus. Turn to your left and follow the lady that is waving her hands. God bless you. Can you clap for them if you are excited about souls? Jesus, we lift up your name. 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 Are you blessed tonight? I'd like you to give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Amen. I wish we had time. I wanted to move in the prophetic a little. I felt that unction very strong. Amen. But um, don't worry, it will go. It will go. Father, we release her in the name of Jesus. Just leave her. We release her now. We release her in the name of Jesus. That's it. Amen. Um, let me make one announcement before we go. Thank you for your patience and your time. It was well spent in the presence of God. Um, many of you have heard about um, our strategic leaders and business summit that is coming up this week under the platform of Breakfast Prayer Initiative. All right? We are using it to mark our third year anniversary for Breakfast Prayer Initiative. For those of you who are not aware of BPI, it is a platform in this ministry that unites and connects Christian professionals. We meet once every month to pray and to command a favorable climate, spiritual climate over our place of work, over our businesses and the works of our hands. Uh, we have a summit this week dominion in the marketplace now this meeting is strictly by admission all right if you have been a part of bpi family ensure you register um, you can either do it online or you can walk up to our public relations desk at the back of the hall right now after the service and you'll be registered when you are registered you'll be sent an admission invitation all right, it is that admission IV sent to you that will become your passage into the meeting. If you don't receive the IV, please don't come. That's why there is no venue. All right, the date of the meeting is 19th and 20th, Friday and Saturday. The time and all that details will be made available online to those people who will be admitted. Now, the reason why we are doing this is because we have halls in Meduguri that have limited seating capacity. Very few halls allow for religious activities. Okay? And because of that, we are trying to constrain the number. We love you, but seriously, we want to reach out to strategic people, Christian professionals in different fields. Okay? Trust me, this summit will change your life forever. Believe me. Two of our guests coming from Abuja are people whom God has um, planted in the area of business in the corporate world and who are ministers in their own class. In fact, one of them just came back from the United States with Apostle Joshua Selman. How many of you saw the meeting he held in Harvard University? He was one of the people who went with him. All right. Um, these are CEOs of their own kind. You will hear things that will really change your life. Believe me. Believe me. I hope you will be there with your wife, sir. Uh -huh. So please ensure you register online. There's a barcode online. Go to any of our social media handles or ask any of uh, ask. Go to our media department at the back there. They will tell you how to. If you want to register physically, walk up to the desk of the public relations at the back. You will be registered. Once you are sent the admission IV, then you have access to the meeting. All the details of the meeting will be revealed. We are trying to contain the number because of the size of the hall. Some of you 
God has to empower you to build a bigger hall in this town so that we can be holding meetings. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We don't even have a 3,000 capacity, uh, capacity hall in this town. May God bless somebody here, here, under the sound of my voice, that will build a hall for that. It's for the work of the kingdom. So that's the barcode. You scan it, register your details, send it. Registration is shutting down by 8 a.m. on Tuesday. Please, let me appeal to us, my beloved Meduguri people and Nigerian people. Don't wake up on Tuesday and register. Do it this night. All right? Attendance is strictly by admission, okay? If you don't register and you are not admitted with an IV, you will not be allowed to gain access because there are some very vital informations that we don't want the public to hear. In fact, it will not be streamed online. It will not be streamed and not all of the videos will go online. There are some very important things that people should not hear. So please, if you are serious about your destiny, about your career, and you want to see God use you to experience dominion in the marketplace, please make sure you are part of this meeting. All right? At registration is free. Say amen to that. God bless you. Meanwhile, um, some of you who have a heart to support meetings like this, if you want to give to support the meeting, we'll give you a privilege for that, okay? We'll give you an opportunity. Still meet any of our public relations officers at the desk there or call our public relations line and you'll be told how to make your contributions for the meeting. The meeting is taken care of, but if you have in your heart you want to sow a seed or you want to give for the meeting, um, we'll give you the opportunity for that. Meanwhile, 30 nights of supernatural favor continues. Amen. Tonight, a few hours from now, join us. You heard the testimonies. God is doing amazing things. So join and tonight is going to be an amazing night in the presence of God. God bless you in Jesus' name. I want to honor Pastor Zion and his dear wife, uh, Barista Sonia. Amen. They are dear and wonderful friends of us. Thank you so much for being here. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you in Jesus' name. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. See you dear next time and next week. God bless you. Lord, we